Welcome to Ray Presents. I'm here with Curly Gittins Jr. Thank you very much for being with me. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for being with me today. So for those of you who don't know, Curly Gittins Jr. is a professional football player in the Canadian Football League. He is a wide receiver for the Toronto Argonauts, the Argos. Prior to joining the Argos, he played university football for the Wilfrid Laurier Golden Hawks. He was named the Ontario University Athletics Most Valuable Player in 2017. Thanks again for being with me. No, so, me. thank you. So, Curly, you were drafted uh, by the Argos in 2019. How how did you uh, find the transition uh, from university football player to professional football player? Um, I. Um, I'll say the biggest thing for me, well, there's a few things. The biggest thing was just like uh, the level of speed. Um, so in university, I was kind of going against um, guys who are like my age. So guys who were um, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And uh, being in the pros, you got guys who are also my age, but guys who are also like, you know, late 20s, you know, early 30s, even mid 30s. You know what I mean? So guys who who have had a, a lot of experience playing professional football. So for me, it was just the adjustment of like um, the, um, game speed. So it's 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 uh, it's a lot faster than what I was used to playing with, mm -hmm. and also and also um, the business aspects of football now comes into play, right? So in college, it wasn't really much of a business. Now it's like a business compared to just playing football. So kind of learn the in, ins and outs of how the business works. You know, kind of leaning on my um, on the older guys who've been here. For the last like you know four or five years or even more mm -hmm. take taking in advice on how i should approach the game on how i should see the game and like you know um what to see and what to expect uh, uh being a professional so pretty much those two were the biggest um, things for me um going from college to uh, the professional level. okay okay so yeah more things to focus on basically now can you tell me what it's like to play, you know, most of us average folks, you know, we watch the games, you know, or we, we go to work, it's four or five, six people, we work from home. For you, when you go to work, it's 20,000 people, you know, <laughs> watching you. How do you adjust to playing in front of a large crowd? You know, what, what's the mental tools that you use to perform at such a high level in front of so many people and so much pressure? Um, for me, um, like, Going for my first year, it was a big adjustment because in college, you know, I think the most we played in front of us was was uh, ten thousand. So I'm going from that to like twenty to thirty thousand or even more. Um, it was kind of literally just kind of like soaking it up because you realize, you know, you don't play football for a long time, um, so you really got to soak in the atmosphere, like the environment, and just kind of like. You know, I'm really playing in front of 30,000 people, but don't let it affect you in a bad way. You know what I mean? So pregame, walking in the stadium, you just soak it all in. But then when it's game time for me, I kind of just focus on just what's happening on the field and not really focused on the fans. So I kind of mm -hmm. really just tune it out. And then, but don't get me wrong, I, I appreciate the environment. I appreciate the amount of people that I'm playing in front of, but I really just don't... Um, when I'm when I'm on the field, I kind of just focus on what's in front of me. What's in front of you? Behind me. Do you have a Do you have a ritual? You know, in front. Uh, you know, you know. You hear about athletes being, you know, either superstitious, you know, or they do little things before the game. I don't know. What What's your thing? Um, honestly, I don't have a thing. My thing is just uh, when it's game day, I just don't like to be bothered. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> don't call you. Don't. <laughs> Don't yeah, text you, like, just, you know, focus. Just, exactly, just say, you know, leave me alone because, you know, I don't want to, like, be mean or something on game day. You know, I just want to just chill, you know, be my own mind and just, you know, focus and uh, think about the things I got to do for the game. So that's pretty much my, pretty much my reach for I really don't got um, any superstitious thing, like, you know, um, yeah, like wearing the same socks and this, you know, on game day type of thing. Okay, okay. So, so once again, you were drafted in 2019, but unfortunately, the, the season was, because of the pandemic, obviously, 2020 season was, was canceled. So, how difficult was it to stay, first of all, you know, on top of your game? 
despite you know that 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 the, the canceled season how what did you do to, to to stay in top form and to remain focused during that time um it all went back to uh my rookie my rookie season um i didn't play the first four or five games i was on practice squad and uh, obviously you, you don't want to be on practice squad you know you think you're good enough to be playing um so for me um not playing the first four or five games and also playing like the rest um, I was, you know, I had something to prove and for me, um, being in the situation in my rookie year, I, I never wanted to be back in that situation. You know what I mean? So even though COVID, COVID happened 2020, um, I, I had that motivation, you know, that desire, you know, just to, you know, to get better, to keep working. So when football do resume, you know, that I'll, you know, I can, I'll be the best version of myself to be able to compete you know, at a high level and to not be in that position that I was in 2019. So that, mm -hmm. that's what kind of get, uh, kept me going. You know what I mean? And also I knew like COVID, some people might take that as a, you know, as a way of just, you know, not working out or as in like a vacation. But for me, that was just, that was a way for me to get ahead of the game. And I used that and just, you know, kept just working and kept having that, um, that mindset that, uh, you know, it'll pay off and then, you know, just keep chopping wood, keep chipping yeah. away. Stay motivated, stay focused. Yeah. So in 2020, you became a father. Congratulations. Appreciate you know, that. so how, how did fatherhood, how has fatherhood changed you as a, as a person, as an athlete and as a person? Um, I feel like it changed me in like in, in a great way because it, now it's, it's uh it's bigger than me you know what i mean it's always been bigger than me but now it's like really bigger than me and, um i just use that motivation um you know i want to give my kid you know the best life that they can possibly have and that starts with me you know me just working hard me staying staying at it and it keeps me humble you know what i mean so i can come home you know instead of like um you know, going out with the guys or whatever. Don't get me wrong. Like, if they're teammates, you can celebrate. Your of course. And I was like, um, you know, now, I, you know, she's at age now where I can come home and, you know, we can talk. You know, she'll she'll talk to me about, you know, because she watches the game. So she she knows a little bit about it. So, we, you know, we can have a little bit of conversation about the game. Mm -hmm. And um, just having that feeling of just, you know, uh, having that feeling of somebody who loves you so much and, you know, coming home to them after, you know, could be a loss or it could be a big win doesn't matter what it is you know they'll always be there you know um comfort and uh it's just a feeling of having somebody around so it's been great and uh like i said it just been you know it keeps me humble keeps me motivated keeps me going and it, and it keeps me uh you know trying to be the best uh, football player slash uh, father that i can be there you go now i i i, I know you you're working on you know, you have your, your, your own motto, your own slogan. So, so tell me about keep going. I believe that's what it is, right? KG two. Tell me about yeah. that. And you know, when you got started and where you, where do you think you can go and where we can get most importantly, where we can get the, the, those, those, those sweatshirts and you know, that gear that you created. Um, honestly, it started in that COVID year, like you were talking about before. It was just, you know, like those, that was a hard time for uh, for everybody. And uh, like you said before, you know, the football season was canceled. Um, you know, I had to go work. You know, I had to stay training. So it was, and I was a, a father as well too. So it was a lot going on uh, in my life. And I just had to find a way just to keep going. So I was working. I was on break or something. And I'm like, you know what? Something just came into my mind. And I'm like, I was just trying to, you know, build my brand and see what I can, you know, build. And KG, so Curly Gittins, it kind of worked with Keep Going. And since I was a little kid, you know, in life, you know, when I messed up, you know, when I made mistakes, even the good things happened, you know, I just had to keep going in whatever uh, circumstances that was in front of me and just keep going regardless of where I was. And knowing and trusting myself that, you know, things will get better, you know, if I just, you know, keep, uh, keep, keep at it, you know, keep going. And that's what I just 
came about the model because I feel like everybody in life, you know, regardless of where you're at, you know, are is going through something. And wh- whatever you're going through, you know, you got to just keep going. You know, you got to just trust yourself, have have a little bit of faith that, you know, you'll get through whatever you're you're going through. So that's where pretty much just keep going comes uh, comes in. Um, yeah, so f- um, so from my website now, um, me and my, um, I would say um, he does all my videos, so he's pretty much my content uh, maker. Mm-hmm. So we're about to release the website in, I'd say, in about a week or so. Okay. And uh, I'll make the announcement and stuff, and that's where um, anyone can purchase it. And I'll have hoodies, you know, um, T-shirts, hats, whatever it is, whatever whatever you pretty much want. Um, but yeah, it's just something um, for me to, you know, to give back to uh, the younger, uh, the younger kids, the the youths, and even like people of my age or older. You know, like I said before, it's just doesn't matter where you're at, it doesn't matter what you're going through. All you got to do is just keep going, and you'll get through what you're going through. There it is. I mean, we, we can't end on there, <laughs> you know, keep going. Thank you very much, Curly. Listen, uh, I encourage all of you to actually check out Curly's merch. You know, the announcement is coming soon, as he said. So, well, I'll post it up on, uh, on my page as well. And, uh, thank you very much. You know how, how I end it is you learn today and we lead tomorrow. Keep going. As Curly said, thank you. <laughs>